Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name is David and this is a Magic Review. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. Welcome back to all of this. My name is David. I hope you're here because you like magic tricks, magic reviews. I love magic. I love magic. Uh, I've been doing magic for a really long time. I've uh, been collecting playing cards since I was in high school. been doing magic since I was in high school. And I'm considerably older now. So you can glean all of my wisdom. If you like to glean my wisdom, that sounded weird. Uh, I would highly recommend you hit like, hit subscribe. That way you'll always be notified when a new review goes live or a giveaway. I do giveaways once a month between this channel and my Instagram channel. So you might want to make sure you follow me over there as well because sometimes I do a giveaway here. Sometimes I do a giveaway over there. So it's just up to how I feel, folks. Today we're going to look at the extractor from Peter Nardi and Alex Zam. All right, extractor. When it came out, it sold out and it was like an instant hit. Everyone went crazy. Everyone loved it. And every time it sold out, a new version would come out later. There, you know, there was Extractor, there was Extractor version 2, then there was Extractor Gold. I'm doing the review for Extractor Gold right now, but I would just say this review would cover all those variations, really. Because uh, I don't think they made a new DVD. I don't think they made a new training video that went with this. So I think this, the DVD has always been the same. They just released new models of the extractor. But again, when, if, when you go to look for it yourself to purchase it, I, I wouldn't even bother with, oh, well, I wanted to get, I want to wait until two's back out or I want to, I want to get gold. I wouldn't even worry because they've all been amazing. Uh, because I was so late to the game to purchase this, you know, it's been on my wish list for a long time. But like I said, it's been sold out in a lot of different places. I found a place that had it and I immediately bought it because I knew, I knew I wanted this because literally I've been watching reviews, I've been reading all the forum pages, and I literally cannot find any magician who's ever said, I bought this and it was a waste of money. I can't use this. Everyone who's ever reviewed this or purchased it has only sung its praises and said just how absolutely amazing this is. I get asked all the time about tricks, like what's the best purchase? You know, what's the best trick? Like this is one of those gold star, black diamond, five star hotel, awesome, uh, must have, must purchase, best purchase of the year types of tricks. Absolutely. So like I said, there was Extractor, Extractor 2, Extractor Gold. Uh, this was created by Rob Bromley and Peter Nardi and all the good people down at Alakazam. What is it? What is this? Uh, when you get this, what are you buying, right? Um, this is a gimmicked deck that allows you to pull the sign card out of the tuck case after it's been loaded in by the spectator. What? Yeah, let me back that truck up. All right, so uh, you have a card selected. It can be a free, free selection. There's no force. Regular standard deck of cards. Uh, bicycle cards, though. Bicycle cards. Um, you give them a pen, they sign it. Sign card, right? Sign card. You then have them return their own card. You can have your, not, you're not looking, your back is turned. They slide it into the tuck case amidst, amidst, mind you, amidst all the other cards. And they can put it anywhere, top, middle, down, doesn't matter. There's no, you're not guiding them. Oh, make sure you stick it between the arrows, right? You stick it anywhere. You seal it right in front of them. Close the flaps. Take that tuck box, put it in your breast coat pocket, and you're done. And what you've done was you've now removed that card from the box and you are free to put that card anywhere you want. You wanna put it in a card to wallet, you wanna do card to envelope, card to shoe, the choice is yours. This extracts, hence the title, Extractor. This extracts a signed card that the spectator had placed into the tuck box on their own. This is one of those test conditions tricks. Let's talk about the review. All right, so a couple questions we always ask about all of our magic reviews, and the first of which is, what is in the box? Now, like I said, I got Extractor Gold, so I can't speak for what some of the other ones look like. I believe uh, Extractor and Extractor 2 came in cardboard box. Extractor Gold comes in a tin. Uh, and I believe with version 2, you get two DVDs. 
Extractor Gold, you get one DVD, but I think the one DVD is actually both DVDs burned to the single DVD. I think, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I think it's the same teaching for all three. I don't think you get a different DVD or a different teaching with each extractor set. That's why I don't think it's, it's gonna matter which one you get, because I think the teaching is absolutely the same. Then you're getting the gimmicked box. Gimmick box, okay? You're getting the gimmick box, and you need that box plus your standard cards, okay? So you do have to carry two decks, or two boxes, I should say, two boxes. Is it what I thought? I figured it had to be an extractor of some sort, right? I figured it had to be some sort of device that looked like a standard deck, but wasn't, and that pulled that card out somehow. But whether it was done by magnets or rubber bands or invisible string or super glue or popsicle sticks, I had no idea. So I kind of figured out the method because they tell you the method in you know the write-up that what it does but the execution of it i had no clue how are the angles on this the angles are very clean really the only side they can't see is the side you're not showing them anyway uh, so you have the tuck case facing down and you have the back side facing up and they're loading it in and then you close up close it up and they can still see that back you just don't I mean, what are you gonna do? Show the tuck box all the way around to 360 before you put it away? That doesn't even look natural. Like there's no even point to doing that. Why would you even do that? Like, hey, look, I wanna look at the tuck case one more time? Like you wouldn't do that. You'd, you'd do just like what you do in the trick. You put it back in the tuck case, put it in your pocket and you're done. So let's keep talking about angles for just a second because to re completely do what you're supposed to do in the trick, uh, you gotta do some palming. Now I'm, I'm being forthright with you there and saying, you know, if you want to do uh, card to wallet, card to pocket, card to envelope, card to shoe, you're going to do some palming. And in your head, you're thinking, ah, game, I'm signing out right now because I don't do palming. I don't do palming. I'm too afraid or I'm too nervous or my hands are too small, yada, 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 yada. I would have made all those same excuses as well. I, I'm right there with you. Um, whenever I buy uh, magic wallets, and I've been buying card to wallets for a really long time. I think I've had like six or eight somewhere in there. Um, a lot of them I sell back or they go in my junk drawer because the beginning of the trick says, have a card selected, bring it to the top and palm it off. And I'm like, great, those are things I, if I have to do all of that, why did I get a magic wallet? Like if I could do that, then how, then, then card to wallet is easy. Like if that's the beginning of the trick, I'm, uh, I want something that's easier than that, right? Now you don't have to control a card to the top because you have extractor. So you don't have to do that. Let's say you were doing it in the moment, right? You have the cards out, they're in play. The cards are in play. So you know the spectator is looking down at your cards, looking down at your hands, they're burning you. And you're trying to get them to look back up at your eyes, right? So that you can palm it off while they're not looking down. But that doesn't mean somebody else isn't looking down, right? So you're, you're worried. And so you're thinking, I'm not gonna palm. With the extractor, you don't have to worry about the palm. All the heat of your palm is gone. And if you're a person that has been afraid of palming, but you've wanted to get better and you've wanted to learn how to do it, then I would say get the extractor because the extractor is gonna give you the confidence you need to start palming and start palming easily. Because think about it, once the cards are gone, they're in a tuck box and the tuck box is now in your pocket, your spectator has relaxed, they're not anxiously watching you anymore because in their minds there's no way you could palm that card off which gives you all the time in the world to do it and the beautiful thing about the extractor is you don't have to palm it off in that moment right uh, the extractor gets the card ready for you you could put it in your pocket come out hands clean talk do something else with a pen or post-it notes or flash paper go back into your pocket to retrieve something else like a pen or something else or the post-it notes and then come back out with the palm. Because at that moment, the spectator's not even thinking about palming at all. So those are your angles. Inspectability, there shouldn't be anything left to inspect. Uh, you're not gonna bring the tuck case back out to inspect. That's the only thing they couldn't inspect, by the way, is the tuck case. And they're not gonna ask for that. They've already got the signed card in their hands. They're already blown away. Uh, nothing's on the table left for them to examine. So you're not gonna bring the extractor back out into play. What's the overall quality and production value of the video? Uh, you got Mark Spellman and Peter Nardi. They're gonna, they're gonna, in like a old house or a museum kind of setting, they bounce back and forth between like the corner of a room 
and a fireplace. Uh, oddly enough, Mark Spellman wears a uh, thumb tip uh, <laughs> through some of the explanations just to see if you're paying attention. Uh, the camera follows them around, tracks all their movements, and that's nice. As far as what they're going to teach you, they're going to go over what's in the box. They're going to show how the secret works. They're going to talk about uh, how Blackpool went and how it went, uh, of them showing the trick around and you know how that worked and, and just the popularity of the effect, the history of the trick. They're going to talk about palming right away, the, their philosophy on palming and how this is going to make you more relaxed, more comfortable, better at palming. Then they're going to go through your tricks. They're going to do card to pocket first, which is really a card to suit jacket pocket. And let me just say, all the tricks on this involve a suit jacket. So they didn't cover anything about, well, what if I have like jeans or something else like that? They're kind of hoping that you're going to be a professional that wears a suit jacket. Okay. And then they'll even spend some time talking about palming there as well, just to make you a little bit more comfortable. Then they'll start hitting uh, a lot of tricks a little quicker. So the first one is Mark Elsden's Mark in My Pocket, where a card is removed, and then once the card is returned, the deck is actually sealed with a sticker, and then you are able to remove the card from the deck. Uh, there's Chris Congreve's pin trick, where you have the spectator write on the card that they select, so it's not going to be their name, but maybe they'll write their pin number down or a four-letter word, and you're able to use the extractor as a peek where you not only have removed their card, but you guess the word or the number they do at the beginning. Then they'll do uh, Gary Jones' That's Right trick. This one was awesome. Uh, again, it involves a word. So the card is selected, the card is lost back in the deck, and then the magician asks for a four-letter word. You write that four-letter word on the post-it note. You lay the post-it note on the table, and then you pull their card out from the pocket not only have you removed their signed card, but the word they said after it was put away in the deck is also written on the card. Then they'll cover card to shoe, which is exactly what it sounds like. You remove a folded card from your shoe and it is their signed card. Impossible prediction is another one of the big whammies on this. Uh, there's a red deck and a blue deck. And what you do is you have the card selected from one color. So let's say they select it from red. It's returned to red, red is put away, you pull out blue, you go through the blue deck, every single card is in new deck order except for their card which is reversed in the deck and when you pull it out, it actually has a red back and it's their sign card. Their sign card jumped from one deck to the other, reversed itself and it's in a completely different deck. Then they'll do a lighter version of Impossible Prediction which is just a brainwave trick which is the same as the above trick except you wouldn't do it uh, in new deck order and you wouldn't do it as uh, a sign card. Then they'll do a trick called sealed prediction, which is really just card to envelope. Uh, they'll talk about how to do this trick with the assassin wallet. There's another one that Mark Spellman does called loan card, where you again have two decks, a red and a blue. Uh, the magician selects one, you select one. Uh, the magician puts one color uh, of his deck in his pocket. So let's say he selects one blue card, puts that in his pocket. The spectator selects one red card, it's put away in the deck, and then when you go to your pocket and pull out that one blue card, it is the card that they selected. Then they'll do a card to spectator's pocket, they'll cover a top it idea, and then they'll talk about a card to a gimmicked wallet idea. Is it well made? It's very well made. I don't even know how this thing was made. I own it now, and I would not even know how to make another one. Like, I tried to break this. Like literally spent $80 on this and then tried to break it. I was like, how would I stick? What if the spectator stuck the card in the top or the middle or the bottom or the blah? Like I couldn't find a way to make this jam up or not work. This thing is going to work every single time and it looks gorgeous. How much practice does it require? Um, I know you're kind of already like, oh, but I got to learn how to palm. Let's say you don't want to palm. Let's say you don't want to palm. Here's a trick that is kind of like a mishmash of some of the other tricks that were covered on the DVD. Here's a trick you could do immediately after having purchased it with no practice and no palming, okay? Let's say you give the cards to the spectator. They can look through the cards, see that they're all different. They can have one selected, okay? You take the cards back, hand them a pen. They sign their card, blow on it, make sure it's dry, right? Card is put back into 
the extractor, okay? Put it back into the deck. You then put the card deck away in your breast coat pocket, and then you read their mind. And you just say, uh, your card was, think about your card, it was red, high card, low card, jack, jack of diamonds, right? Jack of diamonds. And you just read their mind, and you didn't do anything. There's no palming yet. You didn't do anything. And they're like, yeah, that was it. And you say, all right, get out your watch, and let's count, see how fast I could find your card. You reach into your pocket and you just pull the card out like that. How fast was that? Four seconds. Okay. You just did two tricks back to back, a mental uh, reading, and then a quick find. You didn't have to do any palming at all, because there's no palming involved in that. And you could literally do that trick immediately after having purchased it with no practice. Set up and reset is nothing. The extractor goes back in one pocket and the rest of your cards go back in the other pocket. Put your pen in another pocket and you're off to the races. Positives, I think I've said enough positives about this. Like I think you've heard all my positives throughout this whole thing. You want this, you need this. If it, you know, you know, let's put the negatives right up here with it. The negatives are, you kind of need a suit jacket. So that kind of means maybe you're in those kind of environments. Uh, it's 80 bucks, you know, how much is it? Is it worth your money? It's $80, so it's a little bit more. So chances are if you wear a suit jacket and you can afford an $80 trick, you're probably an industry professional. You're probably uh, making a living doing this. Um, so I think really that's the, the who would like this, or those people that kind of work in that area. And I, I don't, I don't wear a suit jacket that often. I really don't, um, but I have them. I have a suit jacket and there are opportunities where I do wear a suit jacket. So I think anytime I know I'm gonna wear a suit jacket. The extractor is gonna be the, the gimmick I take with me, no matter what, no questions asked. All right, so I hope I said enough awesome things about the extractor to give you an idea about how great it is. Um, I quickly searched around to try to see if there was still some out there, and there are. So my good friends down at hocus-pocus.com still have this in stock. They have the extractor two, I believe, which is an awesome gimmick, awesome set. So I would expect by the time this week is over, they'll be sold out because I spilled the beans and let everyone know they're out there. So quickly head on down to hocus-pocus.com, purchase this before everybody else does because I wouldn't think that we could actually drain their supply of this by the end of the week because it's, it's that awesome, you want this. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for being a subscriber. Thanks for being a loyal supporter. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. There's plenty of ideas on this DVD. There's plenty of stuff you're going to come up with by yourself. If you come up with any great ideas, please let us know. So we can um, steal the ideas yeah. and release it on a second DVD possibly or something like that. You never know. Thanks a lot, guys.